Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm probably awake. And today we're going to start a new series, making a track from scratch. So today you're going to watch part one, if you're watching this, which is the intro. We make it arp chords, transitions. We add all the things that you need for an intro and we go step by step on how to do it. So if you're new to making music, this should help. Or if you've even been making music for a little while, maybe this will help you as well. So I go about how I would do it and I hope it helps. So let's get into it. So getting right into it, I went ahead and made this Ableton Live set with a couple markers for the intro, the build, the drop, and the outro. Today we'll focus on the intro, and the only thing that should be different here is for my drum kit. I have this group made with the kick, snare, and tom in it. This has a full parallel processor on it, and then I have tops, that's my crash, ride, and hat, so my cymbals. I have the low taken out with an EQ, and then I have a parallel compressor on there as well. So let's get into it. So to start, usually I'd start with a serum preset or maybe a loop that I found, but today we'll start with the serum preset and I'll go ahead and just write, say, a ARP or something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the scale. Usually I write my songs in E minor, so I'm gonna go ahead and put E minor on here. If you need this, you can go ahead and press scale here with the E and the minor here. If you want to write it in something else, all the other keys are here, as well as a bunch of different types of scales that you can use. Usually I say my songs are in E minor, but I do usually go out of key a majority of the time because I like how, say, F sounds in E minor or how, you know, maybe um, C sharp sounds good. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just write an art pattern and I'll speed through that. So here's what I came up with. So nothing too special. And then I'll probably dig through here and find a preset that I like. So I did download these sounds recently. They're from Rocket Powered Sounds. If you want to download the plugin or the folder, I should say, these are all free. And I'll just go through here and pick something that I like. So I found this pipe plug sound, and this is what it sounds like with the synth. So I'm gonna go ahead and rock with that one for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group my synths. I'm gonna name this synth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a EQ on there to take out the low end. And I'll go ahead and add a re-space probably under this. That way we can get that base area taken care of. And what I'll do here is I'm gonna go ahead and just create another MIDI clip. And then I'll just draw out a base with the saw and then we'll transfer this over to the Reese preset. And here's what I came up with. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select this. I'm gonna press Command L or Control L on Windows and that will loop what we have so far. So now what I'll start doing is filling in this space. We have a pretty decent ARP, we have a bass pattern. So what we'll do now is probably go into Splice here and I'll go ahead and search Pad and I have a couple that I've downloaded and we'll just pick out one that we like. So here's the one that I found and this one's an F minor. What I'll do is click the audio clip. I'll go down one and pitch and my warp mode is already set to complex. So I'll just leave that there and see how it sounds all together. <laughs> That adds a little bit more depth to that and that's what we want. So what I'll do is I'm gonna drag this up to my synth cause we don't need any low end that potentially could be coming out of there. And then I also like to add reverb sometimes, a little bit of high end, maybe a little bit of shimmer if you will. I'll turn down the dry a little bit and then that just takes the sound from something like this to like this. Just adds a little bit more to it. Next what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add one more instance of Serum just to add some type of top lead on top of this. So what I'll do is I'm, again, I'm gonna drag this Serum to my synth group. I'm gonna make a MIDI clip and then we'll just see what this sounds like and try to write something over it. And this is what I came up with. And in conjunction, this is what it sounds like. So what I might do for this specifically is go in and grab an EQ and EQ out some of those harsher frequencies. So maybe up here in this uh, 8K, 5K range. And what you can do when you grab an EQ is you can click this little headphone button here and you can figure out where it sounds unpleasant.
Maybe add a little bit of reverb as well to smooth it out. And then maybe what I want to do is drag these notes to be a little bit longer so that they fade between notes instead of just being harsh and aggressively starting each bar. So that's a good four bars right there. What we can do now is we can duplicate this and start making a few minor changes to make it sound different from the beginning. So what I would do here is probably mess with this top line I just made, maybe change a couple notes here and there. So here's what I came up with altogether. So a little bit of a variation, that way we can continue the song being interesting and not too flat or repetitive. So it adds a little bit of variation. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this pad loop out so it doesn't stop and restart here in the middle. And then that's a good part of our intro. So probably one more time we're gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna go ahead and drag our loop range here to go the full intro now. And then what we can do is we can start adding maybe some chords on top of it, maybe some type of string, something along those lines to add a little bit more dynamic to the intro. So maybe add some chords that follow the bass line, maybe that they incorporate both the bass line as well as the top loop on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy each of these. So the bass line, I'll copy that to the piano here, and then I will also copy the top line as well. So here's what we came up with. So again, I'm gonna drag that to our top group, take out those low end, and all together, here's what we sound like. So we got some chords written. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the piano. It's always really easy to start with the piano because the tone sounds about right. So it's easy to fit that in and switch to a different sound after the fact. Go ahead and grab a serum here and start looking for a chord preset. So there's a bunch that I have in here, maybe a key preset here. And something in Serum that has parameters that you can modulate is always a good idea for the most part to add some dynamic to the sound. So we have a cutoff here that I'm gonna modulate within Ableton. So I'm gonna just go ahead and drag this here, maybe have it open up a little bit, maybe pretend like it's gonna open up a little bit, go back down and then open up a little bit more, and then have it open up towards almost all the way towards the end. So just something like that. And here's what they sound like. Add some kind of swelling to it. So I think that's pretty cool. What we can do as well is take apart some of this intro. So we don't necessarily need the top line here. We don't necessarily need the bass as well, but we can have this filter in. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove some elements from the first part of the intro, and then we'll filter in the bass. That way the second part of the intro has a little bit more oomph when it comes in. So I'm gonna go ahead and filter this in with an auto filter. I'm just modulating the frequency here. So that's a pretty decent intro. What I'm gonna do here now is for some extra transition, some extra impact, what I'm gonna do is actually add some effects. So I'm gonna also group our bass. I'm gonna call that bass there, and then I am going to make another group. So I'll make an audio track, I'll group that track. We'll call this one effects. 
And then what I'm going to do here is the same thing that I did up top with this EQ. I'm going to take out this EQ because the majority of effects is just white noise and things along those lines. What I'm going to do is add some impacts. I'll do a transition and then we'll just add an uplifter just for now. What I'm going to do is go back into splice. I'm going to grab a transition and I actually have one that I like. It's just a white noise transition. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to leave it where it comes and then I'll lower the volume quite a bit. And here's what that sounds like. So what I do notice listening to this back, we do have not a lot of reverb or delay coming off of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a reverb to this. And then you can actually mess with the stereo on this size to make it sound a little bit bigger. And we'll go ahead and add some delay as well. Make it sound a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting. And now what I'll do is I'll find an impact that I like as well. And usually impacts have a fair amount of sub bass coming from them. However, since we EQ them out, what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and add just a kick and I'll let the re-space do the rest of the sub. So here's one. Something like that. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add our first drum sample, which will just be the kick. And we'll go ahead and just pull one for now. So that will probably be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this in here and then I'll drag it up to my kick track and then we'll lower the volume a fair amount. Lower this impact as well. And then align this impact a little bit better. Now it is sounding a little bit empty, so what we can do is we can add another layer or something. You can always duplicate a chord, or what you can do is write another melody on top. So those are three options you can do. I think I'm personally gonna stick with may maybe adding another layer, and we'll see how that sounds. So what I went ahead and did was I duplicated this top layer, our pluck, and then I wrote a different melody just to sit on top of the rest of it. And altogether, this is what it sounds like. with the melody I wrote just sounding like this. Just to add a little bit more top end on top of the sound, that way we add a little bit more dynamic to the intro. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for making an intro, and this is what we came up with so far. So this is the first part of this series. I hope this helps out so far. If you have any questions or comments about this, leave them in below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. With all this being said, thank you for watching and check back on the next video to see us start working on the build. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.